Hi, I'm uh, John Reed, the CEO of Cata Alliance, and also your host of CataNet TV. And we're very pleased this morning to have direct from Russia, Bill Hutchinson, uh, a, a senior member of Canada's tech community, a creator of businesses, and someone who's going to share insights on how we can accelerate digital adoption in Canada. Bill, over to you in Russia. Hi, John. Well, it's uh, certainly nice to be here, and congratulations to you and to Cata for really uh, raising and promoting this very important issue of digital adoption. <clears throat> I think we all know that uh, as a country, we've been running behind other leading countries in the world with respect to the adoption of digital technology. And this is not a new thing. This has been going on for quite a while. Uh, in fact, almost for 50 years that I've been in the computer industry. Uh, but it's a serious issue. And I think one of the uh, questions that you're interested in is uh, what can we do to, uh, to try to stimulate this? Uh, is that correct? Yes, well, we're looking for, uh, I almost want to call it the magic formula, but usually it, it, it's more than one, one thing. How can we really drive Canada to first place in terms of digital adoption and innovation? Are there some keys here that we should uh, consider? You know, there are, and uh, we've been doing a lot of work looking at a lot of these keys over the years. Uh, we've been very concerned uh, nationally that uh, <clears throat> even the enrollment of uh, young people into engineering and the sciences and computer science uh, has been not as high as we'd like. And women, uh, greater proportion of women in these fields would be very helpful in driving this, we think. So we've been doing many things over the years and having campaigns, but the fact is we're still running behind other countries. Now, there is a new initiative and uh, some new opportunity. The uh, fact is we're, we're now starting, if you like, to automate society and the way we live. Um, we've been automating banks and manufacturing and all kinds of things for many years. But as the cost of computing has gone down and the performance has gone up, we now have smartphones, we've got computers on wheels that we call cars, they're in our cameras, <clears throat> and there's a transformation taking place in our cities and towns that really provides an opportunity, I, I think, for a new dimension in digital adoption. It's what we call the move to smart cities or intelligent communities, two of the broad names used. And that really has to do with the use of technology to not only transform the way government services are delivered, but to transform the way healthcare is delivered, uh, to provide new forms of collaboration uh, in education, and in fact, to uh, provide new forms of collaboration throughout society that in turn will stimulate innovation. Well, Bill, how, how are Canadian cities doing with those rankings? And is there anything that we can do to help the mayors, to help the cities, to help the communities advance their standings? It seems to me that when we add all those up, that really equals Canada's innovation ranking. It really will have a big impact on it, John, and that's a great question. Uh, now, three years ago, uh, we did, as you know, start a new Canada initiative called uh, iCanada. Uh, the fact is that we have created some islands of excellence in Canada in this smart city intelligent community movement. And we want to share the knowledge in the cities that have won these awards across Canada. And so iCanada was created to help uh, collaborate, to bring communities together, to share the ideas, the mayors of the winning cities, places like Fredericton, Stratford, Waterloo, Calgary, are very much on board at sharing these ideas. And uh, Waterfront Toronto revitalization is really owned by all Canadians because there are three governments that own a third each of the Waterfront Partnership. And that's one of the world's biggest revitalization programs. So iCanada was created to facilitate a coming together and a sharing of ideas. There are now more than 70 cities and towns uh, working to uh, through iCanada to compete internationally on the awards. There's one award program by the Intelligent Community Forum in New York, the ICF we call them. They've been running this award for fifth, coming into the 15th year. There have been 14 previous years. 
they get a few hundred applications every summer. In October, they narrow it down to the Smart 21, and these are the semi-finalists, the 21 semi-finalists. In January, they'll announce the top seven finalists. Next June, they'll announce the 2014 Intelligent Community of the Year. The great news is that they just announced the top 21 a week ago. Canada has six of these uh, communities in it, uh, six out of 21. We're punching above our weight here. And so those communities are really using technology, but not just about technology, but it's to use it to transform the way we live, the way we get our information, the way we collaborate, the way we learn. If we can, and the call to action really is for everybody that's on this call, everybody that hears about this, to encourage their mayors, their civic leaders, and to get involved themselves. So that if we have two or 300 cities and towns in Canada all working to compete and sharing the knowledge we already have, then the Canadian numbers will go up. We'll increase our knowledge workers, our innovation index will, will climb, incoming investment <coughs> will grow. Excuse me, my voice is late in Moscow here. Um, <coughs> we'll all grow. So the call to action out of this call is to really uh, look at your city and town, see what's going on, um, get hold of iCanada, myself, yourself, John, Barry Gander, and uh, we'll show you how to get involved. We have a governor's council of over 50 mayors headed by the premier of New Brunswick, David Allward, and uh, CEOs. So this is a national movement that's growing rapidly, and I think if we can get a few hundred cities and towns all doing this, everybody wins. The city wins, they're more prosperous, and uh, it would be a great service for all of Canada. Well, Bill, thank you for joining us twice this morning. Uh, we've done an audio interview with you, and now we've done a follow-up video interview. Again, the idea is to engage Canadians in a conversation about technology adoption. I think you've shared some very valuable insights about the co core role of cities, the importance of sharing best practices, the importance of really measuring ourselves against global standards. So, you know, we're very much behind iCanada. It's a great mission. And thank you again for joining us uh, from uh, Moscow, Russia. And we'll uh, look forward to many more conversations with you. Thank you, John. Well, they, uh, anybody doesn't like my face, and there's lots of people like that, uh, they can listen to the audio version. So that's There we that. go. There we go. We, we, we've, given them, we've given them options. Anyway, Bill, I'll let, you, I'll, I'll, let you get, I'll let you get to dinner. And uh, uh, again, great work with your, your advocacy and innovation. Thank you, John, and uh, best to you as well. Bye-bye.